Right, so, so today we're going to be making this knife block. This is actually something we made for ourselves several years ago, but it's been really handy in the kitchen and we thought it would make a great Christmas gift. So we're going to show you how to make it and a few tricks along the way to making it easier. To start with, we need a block of wood. We don't have a piece thick enough, but we do have offcuts from the kitchen worktop in our scrap wood pile. As the worktop is made up of separate staves, it should disguise the glue joint nicely. And there's also something really nice about using the same timber for the knife block as the worktop. If you're interested in building this knife block and are looking for dimensions, we do have plans available for the project, they're linked below. We charge a small fee for these plans, but we think it's a fair price given the time we put into producing them, and they help you to support us and our channel, which we are very thankful for. So thank you if you purchase those plans. Since we'll be cutting steps into the block, there is no sense in making it full thickness the whole length. Instead, we positioned the second layer to only be as long as the top step. Okay, so now it's really important to check that the bottom is perfectly flat and that the sides are perfectly square to that bottom. So this one, I've already checked it, is bang on. And the reason that's important is because a few steps from now, we're gonna be running it through the table saw this way and then this way to remove material. And if those sides aren't perfectly square, you're gonna find everything going a little bit haywire. We then took the block over to the mitre saw to square up the end. With that done, we marked it up with the areas that we wanted to remove. Then back to the mitre saw and we engaged the depth stop and adjust to the correct depth. We then made a few passes at the riser of each step. And now, the more cuts you make here, the easier the next steps are going to be. Just be sure not to go too deep. We found that mitre saws have a little bit too much flex for our liking. Before this saw, we had a cheaper one and assumed that the movement was related to it being on the budget end of the market. But even this one has as much as two mil of movement once it's reached the stop, depending on how hard you push down the handle. It would be easy enough to keep an even pressure on each cut, except for this rubber boot catching as it moves past the fence. We could of course ditch the fence, but it's really handy to reduce the tear out. We're really interested to know, is your experience with mitre saws the same as ours? Like, does yours still have a lot of movement and flex when it hits the depth stop? Let us know in the comments below. We're planning an up and coming video to address some of the weaknesses of this saw. We've got some interesting ideas how we can significantly improve dust collection without losing any of the features of the saw. But anyway, for now, um, best to err on the side of caution, and if you have any doubts, remove less material rather than too much. We can easily clean this up later. Now things start to get fun. First things first, cut the block to its final height. This required two passes, flipping the block in between. It's a good idea to double check before you do this that your blade and fence are square. If everything is square, you should find both halves match up perfectly. With that done, we marked on the fence the exact point that the blade will cut to. Does that make sense? Basically, with the next cuts, we don't want to go too far, and this mark on the fence will help prevent that. Cutting the steps would be a great job for a large bandsaw, but sadly ours is too small for a job like this. So instead, we cut as much as we could with the table saw. The first cut is straightforward, we set the fence to the step height and cut until we could see the saw blade through the slots that we cut at the mitre saw. We can also use the mark on the fence to double check ourselves here. The next cut was a little trickier, but only because we needed to set the fence to meet the first cut. And then we repeat for the second step. This angle shows a little better how far we're cutting.
We then broke out the handsaw to remove the remaining material. Michael added those pencil arcs to better show what still needed sawing away. Now, we found that a typical western saw to be the best tool for the job here. Since the table saw blade is wider than the hand saw, it helps to run your nails along the flat of the saw, pushing it to the correct side of the slot. That can be tricky with a Japanese saw, as they have blades on both sides and tend to be a little bit more narrow. Also, a longer saw is helpful so you can get a good full stroke in there. <laughs> I wasn't going to steal the glory moment away from Michael. That would be cruel. We were happy here with how clean our cuts were. Only minimal material to clean up. Cleaning up the faces was straightforward. A flush trim cutter with a top bearing tidied up the inside corners just nicely. We used a sander with an 80 grit disc to flatten the main faces. Now we needed to flatten this middle step before running the router on the bottom step as the bed of the router will need a flat face to run against. So I had a little slip with the router there, which is quite frustrating, but with woodworking, nothing's ever lost, there's always a fix. And in this case, it's quite easy. We were already going to put a chamfer on these, these edges here, so we'll just add a slightly bigger chamfer and the problem should be fixed. With the chamfer bits now in the router, Michael added a chamfer to those edges. He made several passes here so that he hid the mistake, but didn't go any further than was necessary. Also, we were getting a lot of burn marks on the wood, so we lowered the router speed and did a final pass, removing very little material to try and minimalise this. We then reset the router to a shallow cut and added a chamfer to all of the remaining edges except for the base. The inside corners still needed a little attention with the chisel to complete the effect. But I think that worked out really nicely. We then cut a little cube from an offcut of wood we had. This will be glued to the main block to support some of the larger knives. We were careful with the grain direction here, so when it's all glued up, um, this little block and the main knife block will match up nicely. Cutting the knife blade slots is the last big job that we have to do on this project and it is easy enough. Though we took our time because if we were lackadaisical it would be so easy to ruin everything at this late stage which we obviously don't want to do. First we set up our saw with a solid stop block. Then we set the blade to the correct height. The blade wants to be just a little bit lower than the height of that first step. And then it's a simple job of setting the fence to the right dimensions and cutting through all of those slots. We alluded in the introduction about the trick to getting this project right. Part of that trick is getting the order of operations correct, and the other part is getting the dimensions just right. And we found it a fine line between the knives fitting perfectly and them not. The main thing to be careful of is to keep the block firmly supported at the rear, also, this is not so much a problem for anyone with a larger table saw, but for us with a smaller job site table saw and a smaller bed, it was really important to rotate the block at the end of each cut to pivot it away from the blade. Otherwise, it could fall off the bed of the saw and into the blade, which would be very bad news. We discussed this beforehand, but I think in hindsight we should have cut the slots before cutting the steps. 
that would have made cutting the slots easier and more suited to any saw. We were trying desperately to remember how we made the original and we had concerns that if we did cut the slots first, then cutting the chamfer would be difficult. But we did a quick test running the router along the slots and found the bearing had no problem whatsoever and the end results were just as clean. So if you do purchase our plans, rest assured, they will be updated with the amended order of operations and you'll have no tricky cuts to make. We then gave everything a good sand, including all of the slots. Then glued that little block that we made earlier into position. And finally, it's time to add some finish. We used Fiddy's hard wax oil here as that's what we used on our kitchen worktop and we wanted the two items to match. It's an amazing finish that looks great and is very hard wearing. Though it was a little bit of a chore getting the oil into all of those slots. Perhaps a better alternative would have been linseed oil that you could pour into the slots and wipe away. Though I don't think linseed oil is as hard wearing as the hard wax oil, but for this application, it's probably plenty strong enough. So there you have it, a lovely knife block, which we think would make a great Christmas gift. As always, if you enjoyed this video, a thumbs up and a subscribe go a long way for us. We're still trying to navigate this YouTube algorithm and get ourselves out there. So any support is much appreciated. Thank you guys for watching. Until next time, cheerio.